welcome to the Think Fitness Life podcast, Mindset, Exercise, and Nutrition. My name is Matt Gluckman, and my co-hosts are Eric Menchie and Mike Urso. Today, we're only going to have Mike and myself an uh, interview going on today, and I'll let Mike introduce him. Yeah, uh, today's guest is uh, Mike D'Angelo, and uh, Mike is an exercise physiologist. He's also a entrepreneur, fitness entrepreneur, um, and uh, Mike's been in the fitness industry for nearly uh, 30 years, close to three decades. He's, um, you know, a, a well-established uh, personal trainer and coach. Uh, I had the wonderful chance to uh, work with Mike for a short amount of time, a few years, and I say short, but several years at uh, Equinox in the Boston area where Mike is uh, native uh, of Boston. He, um, just a wealth of information. He's been, been and still is a great mentor to me. Uh, Mike used to be a uh, internationally ranked natural bodybuilder, uh, used to have, you know, different endorsements and contracts, was a spokesman for several uh, different, um, you know, fitness companies. Uh, he was up featured on the co cover of Muscle Media magazine, uh, if you remember that back in the day. And uh, his, his business now, aside from, you know, also working with some clients, Mike uh, runs a company called Body Evolver. Body Evolver is a uh, well, we'll talk about it in a little bit in the interview, but it's essentially a company that uh, allows uh, personal trainers to track different metrics with their client and show their client uh, different results through these different, uh, you know, tr tracking software that he has. He makes it really easy for personal trainers to to show uh, their progress with their clients. And um, I had a Just great time talking with Mike a lot about these different things, you know, in regards to uh, why we need to track progress, why we need to plan goals, why we need to reestablish goals. Uh, you know, how do we set our goals? And we, we got into a lot of the nitty gritty uh, when it comes to goal setting and, and then uh, also tracking different metrics, whether they be performance or, you know, aesthetics. And um, yeah, Matt, did you want to say anything else? No, I mean, it sounds like it's going to be awesome. It's so funny as you're saying this stuff because did he, so you met him at Dartmouth? He was a trainer at Dartmouth? Yeah, that's right. Mike actually used to own a gym called Revolution, which uh, is Revolution Fitness the, or? Okay. Yeah, Re Revolution, which is in uh, the current uh, spot of where the CrossFit, Reebok CrossFit is uh, on Columbus. Okay. It used to be a gym I know where that Revolution. is. Yeah, Mike was an owner there. So and, I've seen, uh, I've seen a body yeah. evolve storefront and it was on like, I want to say it was like on Boylston or Newberry or somewhere around that yeah. area. Yeah, I believe there's an office space there. It was where they, they that's made his. Work out of. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. awesome. Um, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just excited to to hear the interview and what, what you guys yeah, dive Mike into. Is, Mike's great, man. He is a Boston uh, personal trainer of the year, if not once, it possibly multiple times. I know at least once. But yeah, he's he's really just a phenomenal guy, uh, a huge resource to personal trainers. If there's any any out there listening, I definitely recommend you you really cue in and listen to what Mike has to say, and even reach out to him uh, if you have any questions. So he's just doing his own thing now, right? He's not still at Equinox. Uh, no, no longer at Equinox. Mike's just running his business, Body Evolver. They have uh, a couple gyms uh, around you know the, the New England area that they service uh, the entire PT staff. Uh, I know um, some around the Rhode Island and Massachusetts area. I know in uh, Back Bay, Lynx Fitness Club, their personal trainers use his software as well. And it's a, so, it's a small um, it's a small gym, right? Like it's a private one on one training studio. Like you can't join the gym. It's a, it's like training only, right? Uh, Mike's no, I don't believe they own a gym anymore. He used to own a gym. They no longer own a gym. They're they're all virtual now. Oh, gotcha. Uh, they work. Yeah, they Mike works just um, through his company Body Evolver, uh, which is and he just has that office tracking, space on on Boylston. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool man. Yeah. Well, we'll let it ride. We'll let you guys enjoy that interview and follow us on Facebook or on iTunes uh, for more content. And enjoy. All right. So I'm here with uh, Mike D'Angelo. Uh, Mike, thanks so much for coming on, man. I'm really, I've been looking forward to uh, this conversation with you, man. I know you've got a lot of really great stuff uh, to talk about, and I'm looking uh, forward to just diving into it with you, man. Awesome. And um, yeah, me too, man. You got, you're, you're awesome. I love, you know, meeting you years back at Equinox and all that. And I just, I love what you're doing, man. This is awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. I, I think we've known each 
you know, you guys are getting it out there. Yeah, we're trying to. Um, I think you and I know each other since probably like 2011, I think is when I, I moved into Boston and uh, uh, joined the evil empire. And, uh, you know, and so, yeah, it's 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 been great, man. It's been, you've, you've been an awesome resource. And, you know, you've been in the industry, what now, for it's close to three decades. Is that right? Yeah, I guess it's like 20. I started training in 93. So, you know, I don't know, 25, 26 years, something like that. Yeah, 25 years. Wow. Amazing. Um, I want to start off because there was a quote I found on your website that I thought was really fascinating. And I would love uh, to, to hear uh, kind of what it means to you. And it, it goes, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. And I loved it when I, when I heard that. The future belongs to those who prepare for it today. What, what, is that, what kind of significance does that have for you? I just think that as fitness professionals, like you need to prepare for the future. And if you want to be successful, you know, in this, in this industry, you need to, you need to be conscious of the way that you approach your business and you got to take care of the things that matter. Yeah, no, and I love it. Uh, there's a, it reminded me of another, another quote. Um, if you plan, uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? Very similar. Um, you, you kind of got your start actually right out of school, I think in a clinical setting, if I, if I uh, remember correctly. And then you actually shifted out of that after your experience with that into more of the preventative side that we call personal training. Um, talk to me a little bit about that experience and kind of, you know, was there an eye-opening moment for you or what, what, uh, what was that, that shift about? Yeah. Oh, it was, it was awesome. It was like, okay, so I was going to school for exercise, you know, physiology, and I chose to do a clinical internship at BU Medical. So I went in there and I was doing all the, you know, cardiac testing and thallium testing. And then I was working in the lab, like making sure people were within, you know, their heart rate restriction or their blood pressure restriction and, you know, chatted with them about, you know, everything that was going on. And I learned so much doing that. Like that was so critical to, you know, where I eventually went, you know, like, um, but it was fun, but you know, I, I did that. And, uh, you know, you really learn how delicate the system is. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, working at BU Medical was critical, you know, and to, to learning how delicate the system was, but, you know, it, it was working for somebody else. They would, you know, they were, you know, I, I didn't have control of my schedule and I was already doing personal training on the side, like in the mornings, you know, this place and that place. And in the evenings, this place and that place. And the eye opening experience was when I asked the nurse practitioner, if I could, Oh, I have to go down to New Jersey to visit my mom in, you know, the second week of July. And she's like, no, you're not. You're not going on vacation until September. And I'm going, for real? Like, I go down to New Jersey every year to visit my mom. Like, nothing is going to get in the way of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that was, yeah. that was kind of part of it, right? Yeah. You and, then, and then I started doing some yeah. napkin math and realized I was actually making the same or slightly more as a part-time personal trainer, just in the morning and at night, as I was working in the hospital for the whole day. Huh. So then yeah. I'm like, you know what? Like, and then the ultimate insult, <laughs> not really, um, was when the guy, when, when he had given me, now I did go on to work there, right? But on my grade, he told me, you know, you have to calm down your energy. You're a little too positive. You need to be a little more <laughs> chill. You know, oh, like, gosh. and you didn't use the word chill. I'm using the word chill. And I'm like, dude, really? Like, why not bring the passion? You know, <laughs> like what's wrong yeah, with yeah. that? And yeah. that was like a little disheartening. I'm like, how else are you going to like bring your light and help people get better if you're not, you know, yeah, have a good outlook, I guess, whatever. Anyway, so that was all good. But I'm like, you know what? I think I'm working on the wrong side of healthcare. These are great people, but you know what? Why not help people before they get in this condition? Yeah. And, 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 and prevent that from happening. So that's when I'm like, you know, I'm just going to go full bore into personal training. I love it. I can have my own schedule. I can go on vacation. I can, you know what I mean? Like I work hard though, you know, but it's nice to be able to go visit my mom when I want to. Right. Yeah. You know, like, and, and, you know, and I'm not afraid to put in, you know, 18 hour days, you know, when and, I was doing and, and did you feel like a similar um, health impact that you're having with your clients or versus the patients, you know, where you, you feel like you're having just as much impact, if not more impact, because you're approaching it from a preventative side? 
Yeah, I mean, both had impact. You know, impact is impact. You know, like for, for the heart patient, you know, that kind of impact is, is you know, certainly life changing, you know, and sure. for, the, for the individual that, you know, has begun to lose touch with their, you know, their body and they haven't been paying attention to it and they're not treating it well. And, you know, you, you know, geez, a couple of weeks of, of moving correctly. It's amazing how good you can feel. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so many people that don't pay attention, right, to their health until something happens until you know the the heart issue shows up you know at the doctors or you know they they feel the pain in their chest or their hips you know too tight you know then then they're like oh now i'm going to get the hip replacement although i could have avoided that just by moving more often you know over the past you know decade um and it's amazing too and i i found in myself you know there is so much um fulfillment that comes from realizing that what we do as trainers uh, from the preventative side and teaching people uh, because we're we're, yes we're we're helping people change their body change how they feel about themselves but we're also empowering them and teaching them tools that they can use to make themselves better when they're not with us and i think that's a huge part of the process that was very fulfilling for me is when i saw what i was doing or helping people trying to change behaviors actually started to um, you know, change those person's habits. And so then they were cascading into other areas of their life. And, and it was really, um, you know, turning what they were doing before and waiting for things to happen on its head. And they were becoming more um, kind of action takers of their own health. Right. You know, um, you know, something that I want to talk to you about, because you are really kind of one of the foremost experts on this, which is, you know, tracking progress and, and just assessing, reassessing, making sure that um, the work that we're doing as trainers or the work that we are uh, doing as fitness enthusiasts in the gym, that we're actually making progress. How do we know we're getting better? How do, you know, there's a lot of times when you can feel different, but and you don't, you're not really quite sure if there's actually something changing with your body, with your body fat, with your you know, your, your, um, blood pressure with, you know, some of those really important metrics that we look at, um, for you, what are some of those, um, uh, important aspects of tracking progress and assessing, reassessing? I mean, I touched on some of them, but, um, you know, what, what was it? Cause your company actually revolves around creating a system for trainers to be able to track these things with their clients. What was it about you that drew you to really feeling uh, that this was a really important aspect of the the industry that was kind of missing in a way. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you exactly what it was. I was, you know, working in the city, and I I always tracked everything. I mean, maybe first it was on paper, then it was Excel spreadsheets, you know, for a while. And, well, and you were a bodybuilder, right? So this kind of probably started with your own fitness as well. Meaning, totally, like, you yeah, know, I mean, that, it, anybody it, who knows anything about a bodybuilder, they're they're like down to a T in their nutrition and calories, and everything is really micromanaged in that in that setting. Yeah, I and I, I certainly did do that, and I learned a lot from that. And then, quite frankly, you know, you you pass elements of that experience on to clients, mm. and then and then and then you track it. And you're like, well, you know, okay, now you're a guinea pig. Let's just see if this will work. It'll be fun. And then you track it and you see, and then when it does work, suddenly it's like, oh my God, this is awesome. And then they want to do more. Yeah. So, so you use it as a feedback, feedback mechanism to right. kind of show them that things are working. Right. Not just, you know, not, it's also, well, yeah, feedback, you know, for me to hold myself accountable to get the results that they came for mm -hmm. and then hold them accountable to be like, okay. Am I holding up my end of the bargain or are you the one not holding up your end of the bargain? And yeah. we're putting this together, yo, so let's get cracking. Yeah. And so you know, I know that, you know, probably every client comes to you with a specific goal and a specific thing that they would like to accomplish. But, you know, if you had to narrow it down to just a few different metrics or, or um, you know, uh, things that you would be tracking for, you know, the general uh, scope of people like what if you were to say to a trainer hey these are probably non-negotiables on the things that you should be tracking with your client yeah, would, regard yeah. regardless of what their goal is yeah i mean i think i think most people on the planet the majority of the market out there that that needs the help from personal trainers needs to lose weight 
They need yeah. to, you know, I get, co they need to get coaching on how to eat smarter, more intelligently that fuels their system and doesn't create disease inside it, you know, and you need to move, you know, and, and, and do the strength training and, you know, and there's a few things that are important that we should track. We should one, make sure that whatever we're doing, we're not losing muscle mm -hmm. because that's your metabolic rate. So I think we got to run some body fat numbers, but that's not necessarily to look at the body fat, although that's a good thing to look at as well. It's more like, where's the lean tissue at? And then what is that lean tissue able to do right now? Like how, what's its level of performance? You know, like you can do FMS stuff, which is perfect because you can identify imbalances, right? So those are good things to track for sure. And then also just general strength and, you know, you know, endurance stuff, you know, like, and whatever's appropriate for the client. Maybe if it's somebody older, you should be tracking balance because they're there for balance issues. Yeah. And maybe it's some, you know. Yeah. I, Almost I anything. It. I mean, push-ups till failure. How long can you hold a plank? I mean, make it fun. Yeah. And those performance ones are great because uh, sometimes people are scared of the scale. They don't want to look or that it creates anxiety and that anxiety yeah. creates stress. And that stress actually blunts how, how effectively they can, you know, lose fat at times because they just get all, you know, it's this kind of vicious, uh, you know, cycle that happens. Um, but the performance stuff, and, and I've personally found a lot of uh, really great results with tracking somebody's push-ups over time or their mm -hmm. plank holding over time yeah. or, you know, just a uh, very simple things, range of motion, mobility. How does it feel when you bring your arm to here versus when you brought your arm to here last month? Right. You know, those little things, um, they're, they're a little bit more tangible, I think for people. Whereas, right. you know, as you know, you get somebody started on a training program and, uh, they don't always see the physiological changes within those first couple of weeks, but everybody wants instant gratification right now. I mean, that's the world we live in with social media. We can look it up right now. We can get exactly the fix we want right now. And so, we know, and you know, anybody in the industry, you know, knows that have been doing it for a while that they don't happen overnight, that it's a series of built and developed habits over time that eventually lead us to the physiological changes that, you know, right. we're, we're seeking. Um, and right. it ends up being like one day you look in the mirror and all of a sudden, wow, like I look completely different, but it, you know, we know that it didn't happen in a moment. It happened in a bunch of moments over time, but, uh, but we notice it in a moment, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You know. Yeah. So I was going to ask too, you know, for the, for the, you know, let's say the general lay person who is not a trainer, right. But they still want to go to the gym, say they can't afford a trainer mm -hmm. uh, and they still want to work out. They still want to focus on, you know, knowing the things that they should be paying attention to, uh, that they're getting results. Are we talking about tracking the same things? Um, are, are there other, other better, you know, ways for, you know, the general fitness enthusiast to kind of just track how they're, how they're making progress. Well, I'm not sure of the question you're saying. Uh, so, so you got a You got a person who is, you know, say, uh, they, they're, they, they can't afford to work with a trainer, right. Who right. can track all of this stuff for them, but they still want to know how do I, you know, how, other than just getting on the, the weight, uh, getting on a scale and checking my weight that I'm making progress, you know, that, that what I'm doing, the time I'm putting in at the gym is actually moving the needle, you know, and you talked about, you know, lean muscle tissue, you know, a person who doesn't have access to an in-body scale or uh, somebody who can do skin full calipers, they're not going to be able to check those numbers. You know, are yeah, there they, things that they, they can pay attention to? Yeah, they could totally do like a waist circumference. Okay, yeah. So there's a there's an equation and we have it inside the system as an option for people that do, you know, the online training thing um, yeah. where you can plug in the centimeters of your umbilicus after you put in, you know, the height and gender and uh, age, and then the, it'll extrapolate out the lean, you know, the percent fat and then the lean mass and the fat mass. And then as you, as you lose, you know, your centimeters go down and you can, that is objective feedback. Like objective feedback is really good for, for grounding people to reality. Yeah. Right. You know, like, and sometimes people are so busy in their head that it doesn't really serve them. And they, you know what I mean? Like, so, and, and that's where the numbers and the science can kind of allay these concerns if you allow it. Right. Like, Hey, this is where we're at, man. And it's not where we're at now. It's where we're going. So let's go. Yeah. You know, and then, but measuring, you know, doing that measurement is, is one way to do it. And then, you know, 
you know, listen, it, I, there's all kinds of, you know, programs online that, you know, that people can, you know, subscribe to and, you know, got, you know, fitness workouts they can follow or, I mean, there's so much stuff out there. It's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. With, with some of these assessments that we talked about, like checking for lean body mass, checking for body fat, you know, weight, things like that. Are, are there, are there good kind of intervals throughout the, you know, the training cycle, uh, that, you know, or, or I should say, how often should we be doing these reassessments and assessments, you know, are like, you know, should you be waiting longer to do one versus the other, or is there a good timeline? Yeah. I mean, okay. So we just did some, you know, it's really good to know what to expect, right? It's good to say, Hey, you know, this is where the numbers are at. And if we do X, Y, and Z, Science dictates that this is what should happen. And if we do it, we'll get there because there's no reason why science shouldn't work, <laughs> you know, like, right. and so it's when you validate it, right, right. I mean, it's, it's kind of just, it's the way it is. So, um, you know, you, you, you know, use the, you know, I guess the, the numbers, you, you hold them accountable, you, you, you show them, you know, um, so we did this research with Wayne Westcott, right? And this is what we can expect, okay? We can expect, this is crazy. We can expect if you work out two, day, two days a week doing strength training, right, over six months, mm -hmm. and you make sure you get in protein, right? And you do, so it's basically two 20-minute strength trainings a week, two 20-minute cardio sessions a week, and making sure you kind of keep your calories within, you know, the the twelve to fifteen hundred or the fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred for male, mm -hmm. right? You can expect to lose like seven or eight pounds of fat and gain three and a half pounds of muscle. Wow! Do you know how That's impactful is a, that is to your metabolic rate? Yeah. And you this was add a study that, that it's not. We home. got this whole study, dude. I should send you. I should send you his slides. In fact, I should pull the slides up and they're neat. Yeah. It, it's, you well, know, the numbers are really cool and it gets people in, to uh, commit to the end result. Yeah. Is it published in EPUB? Do you know? Or? It was published in the Journal of Clinical Exercise Physiology. I think it was. Okay. So we could probably find that link to it. Um, I think that'd be great for people to read so, because okay, that's so really yeah, eye opening. So yeah. Uh, yeah, effects of resistance training and protein on body composition following weight loss. So this is like the maintenance. Oh, and then there's the maintenance. So then here's a new study, right? Just little, this one just came out, the maintenance study. So after they did that for six months, um, nine months, I think it was, they did the whole weight loss study for nine months. And that was the, like the results from the people that made sure they got the protein and they did the strength training and they were consistent. And the average weight loss was what? I think it was like uh, eight pounds of fat and gained three and a half pounds of muscle over about, Oh, wow. I think it was about eight, 80 people or something. Yeah. So a huge, a huge, uh, uh, you know, uh, change in body composition as well with that. Right. Right. But you know what? A little bit of commitment. I mean, how much time is that? That's so little. It's ridiculous. Yeah. T twice a week for 20 I know. minutes. You know, now, now granted it's a, you know, it's the way that they do it is almost like the way, and this is interesting for trainers to talk about, right? The way they do it is very similar to the way that they have the circuit set up at like planet fitness. Mm -hmm. So they do three exercises, one, two, three, you know, and they'll do, you know, two rounds or do, do three rounds. And then they'll go over to the cardio for eight minutes and do cardio for eight minutes. And then they'll come back into the weight room and they'll do three other exercises on machines. Of course, you know, you know how we feel about machines, right? Being trainers, we want sure. to teach people how to move without, you know, whatever. But Functional, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But stimulating lean tissue is still stimulating lean tissue and it's important. Yes. It is important to your longevity, to your health, to consciously be aware of that lean tissue. So it, it, it works. It's crazy. Yeah, so we little works we, so well. Yeah. We talk about this with the guys all the time, uh, Matt and, um, and, uh, uh, Eric and it, you know, pretty much it's, it's all about putting some sort of stress onto the system that the body is not accustomed to. Right. And the body 
when you put a stressor onto the system, it adapts. Right. And so, you know, what you're talking about in this study is a form of acute stress, you know, something that allows for a stress to happen. And then there's a recovery period where the body can super compensate and mm-hmm. build back beyond its previous point. And right. then you repeatedly stress the body over and over the, the problem where a lot of people fail. And this is where, you know, the, the poison is in the, is in the dosage, right? Which is that you've got the people who overdo exercise and actually have diminishing returns because they don't allow for the recovery part of that, that general adaptation. And, uh, and then you have the people who don't provide a stimulus at all, right. Our, you know, desk jockey who doesn't really uh, get any exercise, sits on his butt for uh, eight hours a day, gets in his car, drives for another hour, goes home, sits and watch television for another hour. And so you've got people who are not stimulating their body at all, but it's that acute stress that is actually what allows us to, um, you know, get better over time. And that, and that's with everything that's with, you're seeing it now with people who have peanut allergies. They're giving kids tiny little micro doses of peanuts, which is a little acute stress to the immune system. The body can build up the antibodies. And then over time, that person is less and less allergic to that substance, but it's, it's a acute stress. It's not something that's chronic. And I think that's a huge point to make as well. I want everyone to know that I'm standing right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using my tissues. You know what I mean? Like why sit? <laughs> yeah. You you know, I'm, hang I'm, on your, I'm sure you have a stand up desk too. Uh, I, I like to stand. In fact, I work at uh, a work bar, which is in the staples. Uh, they are co-working spaces. And what's great about these is they have many different options that you can sit at a regular, you know, office mm-hmm. table. You can sit in a booth. Yeah. What's the name of it? It's called work bar. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. very similar to we work. Yeah. We work. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Fun place. And, and so it's great and, and because you can choose depending on how I'm feeling for the day, I can sit down or I can go to one of the higher tops, set up my computer and, and work from a standing position. Right. I, I can, I could change positions through the day. And I think that's the big, uh, uh, you know, part with this whole thing is what you're saying is you don't want to stand all the time. You don't want to sit all the time. You want to be kind of, you know, up and down and, and really just creating and exploring movement. Uh, yeah. exploring what our amazing bodies are capable of doing. People don't even scratch the surface of what our bodies are capable of doing. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I've had this conversation just recently with uh, Zach Schlein of uh, posture break. In fact, uh, about that very thing about getting stuck in a specific posture for too long and how that has such detrimental, um, you know, uh, uh, aspects of what it can do to your body. Yeah. Totally. Well, you know what? It's almost like people are just consciously, they're unconsciously letting go of conscious control of their body. Did that make mm. sense? <laughs> yeah. And why do you think it is though? Why, why are people, I think people are, are just it? very busy in their head. And when you're busy in your head, you're typically thinking and thinking has to do with either past or future. And right. it hardly, it isn't presence. Right. And yeah. when you're, when you're present, it's like, you know what, a dog and a cat, they wake up in the morning and the first thing they do is they stretch. They like, get up, oh, yeah. good stuff. Rah, you know, we get out of bed and, you know, most people get out of bed and, and just unconsciously lumber to the bathroom. Yeah. Like, stand up. Hello. <laughs> right. yeah, hello. Wait. Hello. Say hello to your muscles. Yeah. You're like Frankenstein going to the coffee pot. You yeah. Know? Like, you know, come on, bro. Seriously, sister? Yeah. Really? I think you're right, though. I think one of the best things we could do every morning is to get up and start moving immediately. Right? Get up and do an head. overhead air squat. Ah, I'm doing them right now. Nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, and it keeps your it keeps your mind engaged, too, right? Totally. It keeps your brain, keeps your brain on. I like to think I feel better on my feet, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> love it. No, but it's true. And, and, you know, for our clientele, too, and you must have – Uh, You know, you've probably worked with, I don't even know how many people, uh, at least dozens or even more than a hundred clients, I'm sure in your, your tenure as a trainer, um, you get people who work, (laughs) get thousands, they they work high level jobs, right? They may be an executive or all of their own business. They have a lot of high level decision making that they're, um, they're reliant upon. And so, you know, exercise is one of those things that doesn't just focus on your body. It is one of those great, uh, you know, stimuluses that has benefits, uh, you know, holistically for everything. And so 
it, it is. It really is. Exercise and movement is a magic pill for so many different chronic diseases, um, for cognitive you know, types of diseases and things like that, and uh, brain degeneration, things like that. Um, you know, but, but the thing is, is there's so many people that just can't get themselves up and moving. And, you know, and really it's what you said, they're all in their head. They don't prioritize. There are too many distractions, right? I'll, I'll do it when I get the time, as opposed to I'll make the time to do it. Um, you know, do you have strategies that you've used with clients in the past? Um, you know, who struggle with some of those, you know, trying to get their butt just up and moving and, and to the, to the gym or to get to doing some stretching in the morning or drink more water. You know, what are, what, what are some of those things that you've run into uh, or strategies that you've, you've used with those people who struggle with that? Cause that's, that's probably a good majority of people that may be listening in here, you know, is, is how can I get myself kind of up and moving when I don't feel motivated or I don't feel the need, you know? Yeah, I think you can never go wrong by drinking water with lemon. Mm. It is definitely uplifting. It is very cleansing. And yeah, I think it works yeah. incredibly well at raising spirit. And I don't think people, you know, people are not drinking that. Why? <laughs> what are you drinking? You're, you're, if you're not drinking that, then you're really almost like you're like destroying your health. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, it's, it's, I don't know. Like, really that would be the right. first thing. I, I can't I can't believe, like, just by dumping Diet Coke out of somebody's diet, I've seen people dump, like, 16 pounds in, like, just a few weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, just, I, I, psh, okay. shit. I got an example of that. I had a client, uh, when he came to me, he was drinking about six to eight Dr. Peppers a day. That's that's right? crazy. Now, not only is that caffeine, but that's a lot of sugar. I mean, that's, I don't even know how much sugar that is. That's got to be like a Ziploc bag full of sugar. And um, we started cutting it down, but we didn't, here was the thing. And this is what, what I, I think was really important is you got to start somewhere small. So like your suggestion of just, just drink a glass of water when in the morning, when you get up, it's like, that's it. Just do that. And you'll see good things happen. And if you want extra credit, you can drink one right before bed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But but start there yeah. because a lot of people look at it as like they they got this mountain that they're staring at. How am I going to make this change? Well, you can't lose 20 pounds until you can lose one pound. So let's focus on the one pound first. Nice. Right? I love that. Yeah. And so, you know, I've got this client and, you know, six to eight Dr. Peppers a day. And, uh, you know, he's carrying all this extra weight around his belly. Now, mind you, this guy is about 24, 25 years old, MIT student, you know, really, really smart guy. Yeah. Couldn't imagine what, what all this in, overindulgence of sugar is doing to his brain and what it will do over time. So this was a critical time for us to get it right so yeah. that his development, you know, into his later years um, is really just flourishing. And so we cut it down and I said, you know, this week, let's focus on just four. You can have four, you know, cut two of them out. And so we did that and then another month went by, you know, and then he got to a point where he got confident in his own abilities and he started, you know, I'm only had two a day now to a point where he's like, now I'm only having one a day, eight, nine months down the road. And he's like, you know, I don't, I don't have any Dr. Pepper anymore. And guess what happened? <laughs> Wave your magic wand. Da -da. He's losing a ton of weight now. He's not storing weight around his belly, you know, and, and again, you know, he didn't even know what was going on. He didn't know that all that was killing him and right. what it was doing to him. But it was, it was, you know, making those small changes over time that built his confidence. He started to take control of the situation and he started to now reduce and make the changes on his own without me even prompting him to do it. And so that's what we want to get to with people is, you know, start small, build your confidence and then, you know, let, let it, you know, create a monster of its own, you know? Yeah, no, totally agree, dude. Um, it's yeah. just amazing so, how all of the things that most people are consuming, you know, in the form of, you know, food or, you know, liquid is, is literally poisoning them. And part of the problem is everyone's again, like they're busy in their head and they're less present in their body. If, if you, when you start paying attention to your body, Right. And you and you feed it and you feed it well and you take that stuff out. And you may, It's not that you take the stuff out. You put in the stuff that you should get. So you make sure you get in enough protein. You make sure you get in some vegetables and some, you know, some fruit. Make sure you get in some fat, you know, and then you can have some car, you know, like you can obviously have your carbs. You know what I mean? But 
most yeah. people, if they would get in the level of protein that they that they should, if they were conscious of it, they wouldn't even desire the foods that they're desiring. The, the foods that they're consuming is feeding their gut biome, which only makes those bacteria in your gut crave that same food again. And then it's just this vicious cycle. Like it's just, you got to stop it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, and then it's once true. you start eating clean and you start to feel good, you're like, Oh my God, like, why would I even eat that crap when it makes me feel like such junk? Oh, yeah. What you I know love. what it's like, you eat oh, clean yeah. for a while and then you go off the rails and you're like, Oh my God. I'm like, right. Oh. Well, there's two things you said there that I really like. One was, the positive displacement strategy, which is don't focus on taking out the bad stuff, put the good stuff in and the bad stuff works its way out naturally. It just drops. And then, and then, and then you don't feel the, that you don't have the feeling of depriving yourself of all right. those things that you do, but you end up f saying, well, I don't want to self-sabotage myself since I've been doing all these good things. So I'm just going to, you know, maybe I'm going to cut back on some of those poor decisions I've been making and little by little, they work themselves out. I love that, that strategy. Yeah. Um, Another really good thing. thing I think is, you know, I mean, okay, if we're going to do these steps, right, <laughs> I'm, I'm adding to this, right? So the next thing I'd yeah. say is, you know what, do like one or two pieces of fruit at like four in the afternoon, mm. you know, and if you can, if you, I mean, without showing off, if you did your water in the morning and your water at night, if you did water at like five and you bring some kind of a structure to the hourly day deal, Right. You get these things in strategically. You get two apples in in the afternoon or an apple. Like if you're just, you know, a smaller person or whatever, you get an apple. If you're a bigger dude, you get in two apples. Apples have pectin, appetite suppressant, boom, fiber, good fiber. Right. And then Slow come down dinner down. time, yeah. you're not going to have the hungry horrors. Yeah. Because that's what gets people in trouble. Then they can't control themselves because their blood glucose is way off. Well, you know what? Stick in a little natural sugar and a ton of fiber. Fill yourself up. At, at, you know, suppress your appetite with the pectin in the apple with all the fiber. Woohoo! Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's Simple. true. And, and fruit is a great suggestion because you know why? In a world of where a lot of people are looking for convenience and drive throughs and, you know, it's just not – it's just not time effective for me to come home and cook a meal. I don't have the time. Uh, fruit is a great option because it's grab and go. Um, it's so one of those nuts. things where it, it, so it's healthy. Nuts. Yeah, another another grab and go. Get get the hundred calorie snack packs. I the yeah. nuts. I keep nuts in my car. Nice. Oh, oh, you know what? It's you know, it's eight in the morning and it's time for something. I have a small handful of nuts. Boom. Yeah. Hold me through fats, till 11 or 12 protein. or whatever, you know? Yeah. Healthy fats, protein, fiber. I mean, uh, great options. These are great options. Do you have any other ideas on uh, different options, you know, outside of the fruit and nuts and, you know, what other kind of things can people, um, you know, that are on the go grab for that are, that are going to be you know what healthier? I would, than... I, would, I would recommend, I would recommend them just very simply not changing any habits at all, continuing to do exactly what they're doing. But try to be a little more observant of how they actually feel after eating what it is they're eating. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you do that, yes. and you're just like, you know what? I'm actually like paying attention to it. And most people yes. are like, I kind of feel like junk. Yeah. You know what? You said something earlier that it just reminded me. And that was when somebody, you know, works out for a consistent time and then they take some time off or they eat really clean for a long time and then they, they go off. Um, you know, the, uh, the path a little bit. Yeah. yeah totally. Your body responds, you feel it. Uh, your body gives you feedback all the time. And I think to your point, what, you know, people need to be more conscious of how they feel, what things are doing to them, yeah. what their body's experiencing. And, and just like, um, you know, a person who exercises for the first time in, in months, years, they're super sore. Their body's like, what the heck are you doing? And that's feedback to say, Hey, dummy, you got to do this more often because your body's not not prepared for it. Right. Um, just just yeah, just as the person who works out consistently and then takes time off, mm -hmm. and then when they take time off, they're like, "Hey, buddy, uh, you're supposed to be in motion. What are you doing sitting here for this long?" Yeah. Um, your body's giving you feedback all the time, and we don't pay attention to it, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. And you know, and when you start doing the working out. It's kind of like, okay, well, you know, pay attention. Like if your muscles are sore, you'll, if you pay attention, you'll sense your body wants, you know, that it wants more protein. 
but you got to listen to it. Yeah. I can tell you, your sore muscles do not want Twinkies. <laughs> right. Right. You know what I mean? And, it doesn't and, want Diet Coke either. It wants water and lemon so it can improve the metabolic processes of healing inside the cell and, you know, provide it with the necessary amino acids for repair and recovery. So that right. you can increase your lean tissue, increase your metabolic rate, and live happily ever after. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, Mike, these are just some simple strategies people can use. Grab fruit, you know, uh, it's, you know, try to get 20 minutes of exercise in twice a week, you know, some strength training, something yeah. simple. Yeah. But, but really, there are, um, you know, a lot more advanced techniques. And, and as you said, science doesn't lie. We have science at our fingertips that tells us if we do X uh, and Y, we get Z. Right. You know, you have and, and I want to get into Body Evolver a little bit, which is your company. And talk a little bit about that for the trainers who are here who, you know, maybe want to take a deeper dive into, uh, you know, assessing some of these deeper metrics and using science. And I know, you know, we talked about just simple nutrition types of uh, uh, modifications people can make. But really where the magic happens is when you do start to count the calories and you can start to prospect out the calorie counts and the macros to coincide with the training program. And I know that's a big part of what your software entails uh, and why people are getting results from using it. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit about that, you know, and for you and, and, you know, really what, um, you know, what, what is, what is the, 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 how did this software come about and, and really what are the capabilities of it and how, how are you seeing trainers really having amazing results with their clients because of it? Well, you know, I think what it really boils down to from a building your personal training business thing is that, you know, it's a place to storehouse all the information that's, you know, that you need to really care for this client over, let's expect the rest of their life. And if you take the time to collect the data and the information that matters to the client, then, you know, that, that empowers you. It helps the client, um, you know, kind of be reminded of what it is we're trying to do because I think most people, again, they get, they get lost in, in their old world and they don't care for themselves well enough. And you know what, if you're sitting there and you're like, listen, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to do this for your own good. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your family. You deserve better for yourself. You know, you're going to feel great. And I know you like fun. So let's get cracking. Yeah. And then hold them accountable to what it is you know, that, that we came there for. And, and that's why, you know, collecting, you know, some information, not just the body fat and the performance and that, but also what are their goals and why, what are their motivations? Why, what are they motivated by? You, trainers are naturally really great listeners, but you're not going to remember everything. Right. So if you collect that information, when the client is disposing it, which is typically the first time you sit down with him. And if you're having a raw conversation and you're actually trying to receive and understand this client, and if you write everything down that comes out of their mouth, you can use that information for the greater good of the client over time. And that builds you a sustained personal training business that you get results from your clients because you, you, you're compassionate, you care, you're calling them out, you're looking after what's best for them, and you're getting paid for it. You should do that. And if you're not doing that, what are you doing? Yeah, it's a disservice to the client. It's a disservice to the client, totally. You know, and that's really, and that's it. And I find, I have found that it's not easy to do all that. I did it and it took a lot of work. But you know what? Yeah. The technology, you can do it so much easier now. It's like boom, yeah. bang, done, organized for life. You pluck it in. The, once the data goes in, it's there. And then you can just manage it. And you pull reports and you can say, okay, who signed up last year this time? Who did I miss? Who, who haven't I spoken with in a year? Oh, my God. I forgot about Bill. Dude, Bill, what's happening? How you been? How are things at so-and-so company? Whatever. Because, you know, you trained them. You're yeah. checking in like a yeah. product. Absolutely. And it shows people that you care. There's that classic quote, um, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. You got to care more for that client's results than the client does. And I felt that way a lot of times with people. Totally. But I really. And, but, but here's the, here's to where we even started this conversation, which is, you know, in the beginning, you weren't willing to 
uh, change yourself to the environment that you were in, in that clinical setting where you wanted to bring the energy. Sometimes as trainers, we, we are going to encounter clients who have fallen a lot of times and have fallen on their face a lot of times when trying to lose weight or, or uh, attain a goal. And we have to be that transference of energy for them. We have to be that person, that, that spark plug that lights the fire and keeps it burning until they, you know, can, can feel it within themselves. And so, you know, we have to be that for people. And I've found that sometimes I've had clients who really just, you know, they struggle to, to, to kind of, like you said, bring the fire. And I, um, you know, I, I sometimes feel like I, I do a reassessment with somebody and wow, like, am I more excited about this five pound weight loss than they are? Like, why aren't they even thrilled about this? And, you know, it's, it's, um, it is, it, it has to happen over time, but I think you're right. I think maintaining some sort of, um, documentation process where you're, you're writing it all down. You're referring back to it. You're constantly pivoting. Yeah, you're you know. pivoting. To, you're, you're doing it to hold yourself accountable to make sure you you actually are delivering a quality service. I mean, that's what we're yeah. trying to do here. I mean, if you want to, this is the service industry. If you do not serve well, you're not going to be a trainer for long, and you got to struggle. Right. And it's so easy to serve well. It's not even hard. You just have to you know document stuff, write stuff down, and just even you know. Dive into your own fitness. I think that's the best thing most personal trainers can can do is dive into their own fitness and then, you know, share that. Listen to the client. Obviously, deal with the client's needs first, but you know, share your overall enthusiasm for life and fitness, and and it rubs off on them. And you know, they, they begin to, you know kind of absorb a different reality about it. Absolutely, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think that there is one hundred percent a transference of energy. Yeah. I, I mean, you you feel it. Uh, I mean, it works like a tincture, like you said. Like a, it's just a spark. Right. They have the, they have it in them. You just got to kind of, I like, <laughs> you can light a fire, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, and I, I really think that the 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 environment is much stronger than the organism itself. I think the environment that that person operates in. You know, do, and, and there's another point too. There's a lot of people who don't have really good social support when it comes to right. focusing on their goals. We have a lot of people who come to us and they may not have that support from their spouse or their kids at home or family members, yeah. or they, they may not even know that this person is trying to, to uh, improve their health and wellness. And so they come to us uh, and, and confide in us. And so we have to be that social support for a lot of people. Um, we, and that's a really important part of this process too. People want to feel like somebody's paying attention. Like, does anyone notice that they're, Listen, yeah, they're doing it for themselves, but does anyone know, do you know what this that, is? What I'm doing, do you know what this is? What? This is called quantum physics. Mm. This is quantum physics in real time. When you watch a client consciously expecting a certain outcome, you help that outcome. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and when the client knows that they're being watched and they know that they're being watched from a position of, you know, compassion and, you know, brotherhood and sisterhood and all that good stuff. It's like they yeah. just they it just being observed and, and knowing that somebody is there, I think, definitely plays. Yeah, you, you basically you, you manifest your result by believing in it, by right. paying attention to it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And you bring that into your reality. You know, like, you know, I bring your fitness goals, what you're trying to do. I'm bringing that into my reality. Let's go. Come on. We're almost there. It's going to be fun. This is awesome. Come on. Let's crush it today. Right. You know what I mean? And drink your water and yeah. fill me in and let me know what's up. And then send them a text over the weekend and like, dude, what's up? Whatever. Yeah. Whatever it takes just Why to get it going. That? And then once it gets going, then it's like, I mean, your goal, I think, my goal as a trainer has always been, listen, if I do my job correctly, I'll work myself out of one. Yeah. yeah. You know, like Mike, I got to question too. Why, why do you think, because you've worked in a gym around a lot of trainers before for many years. Why, there's a lot of trainers out there who just don't bring that fire. They don't have the same enthusiasm that you do and others do. I mean, what do you think it is that, that you know, has trainers kind of just kind of dragging their feet around sometimes and not bringing the fire? I don't know. I mean, is it because they're not paying attention to their own health and fitness as much as they should and, and really live in, live in and, you know, you know, walk in the talk? Yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, I'm not, I'm, I think that, I think most trainers get into fitness because they had some positive experience with themselves that changed their life, that made them feel good. And that's why they got, you know, 
that's why they got certified, you know, and, and that's why, they, and they want to help people. You know, I just think it's not obvious what it takes to help people on a, on a organized basic, massive scale. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like how can you organize every single person you come across right. forever? And, 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 let's, and let's not be naive to think that tracking and doing this stuff on a regular basis is easy because it's not the trainer who is going to uh, really, uh, really go all in and dedicate themselves to tracking numbers to, you know, restructuring and having that goal setting, um, you know, a conversation month over month with that client to constantly pivot, constantly change what they're, what they're uh, aiming towards. Uh, it's hard to do that. And you have to have systems in place. You have to have reminders um, or you, you just have to, you just have to have that. And a lot of people Even don't just say happy have birthday. That. Yeah, right. I used yeah. to in, you know, back in the day when you had a Palm Pilot, you know, yeah, like way yeah. back when, I used to put clients' birthdays in my Palm Pilot on their day so that as I, you know, went and saw, oh, I would see whose birthday it was. It was like, a, you know what I mean? Like, and now you can I still do that. that. Everybody's in my Google Calendar. I have a notification whenever a client's birthday and the people I haven't worked with in three, four years, I still send them a message yeah. on their birthday. And that's fun. Because of that reminder. Who doesn't they, love and, that? And, and it's amazing. I stay in touch with people at least every year. I know I'm going to talk to to everybody at least once. Yeah. You know. How about a Facebook yeah. birthday? What's not to love about a Facebook birthday? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. It's so fun, isn't it? You can get as wild as you want. Oh, yeah. Um, Mike, I, I want to wrap things up a little bit. Um, thanks so much, man. This has been great to really just, uh, you know, pick your brain a little bit about, you know, what, the psychology of a lot of this um, and uh, and the importance and, and the value when we're talking about tracking and measuring things and, and you know, ha having trainers working in a results-based business, how important doing this stuff is. Um, I'd like to, uh, if we can, is there a place that people can get in touch with you um, if they want to learn more about, you know, Body Evolver or just uh, have questions for you in regards to anything we discussed today. Do you have a website, uh, Instagram, Facebook, anything like that we can throw out there? Uh, yeah, you can, you know, my email is mike at bodyevolver.com. Pretty mm -hmm. simple. And the website's bodyevolver.com. Um, you know, and that's the, you know, the software for, you know, for trainers and whatnot. Um, cool. So, yeah, so it's, uh, it's all good. Thank you so much for having me. This is a really fun conversation. I love talking about fitness i just absolutely love it. yeah brother just never gets and tired no right michael oh no absolutely and and no doubt that we'll do this again i, I have Fun. i have uh, no doubts that we'll do this again because we do it all the time yeah. so um this is just a little more formal setting but uh yeah mike thanks so much man uh, i think uh listeners are going to get a lot of good nuggets out of this and uh we'll catch up with you soon all right, all right. awesome brother thank you take care